Despite being about a year old, the Galaxy S21 Ultra can rival most of 2022 flagship offerings. Should you pick one up in 2022, or if you're having a Galaxy S21 Ultra, should you upgrade? Today we'll discuss it. First, let's talk about the display. This is a very high quality display. It has a Quad HD resolution, 120Hz adaptive. It is dynamic AMOLED two times. And also it has 1500 nits of peak brightness, which you'll definitely be able to see in bright light. So this has a hole punch display, just like Samsung's most recent flagships. And the bezels are thin all the way around. This is really a very bright display like you wouldn't really have a problem seeing in harsh sunlight. This phone is very well built. It is very sturdy and it feels very premium on hand. The design design is personal so I won't really talk much about it, but it is also IP67 water and dust resistance. And the camera of this phone is just beautiful. Even in 2022, it holds up amazingly well. Photos are detailed, color balance is there, and dynamic range is great. I have four different magnifications to the camera, starting with this ultra wide camera, and then we also have our main one times, as well as the pretty standard three times telephoto lens. But here's the sweet deal the Galaxy S21 Ultra comes with a 10x periscope uh, telephoto lens, and this can go up the way to 30 times as well as a 100 times. Although I wouldn't really use it at a 100x because it's just not a very good shot, but it's still usable. But between the Galaxy S20 series and S21 series, Samsung already fixed the dynamic range. Just look at the buildings at the back, it's not washed out, and the skies in this photo is also not washed out. You still can see the blue color hues of the sky. The ultra wide lens also does a solid job, and it also acts as a secondary macro camera. A macro lens basically allows you to take close up subjects such as this photo. I don't really use the macro lens that much other than a bit of curiosity or just trying to kill some time by entertaining myself. But for those of you that are serious, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is one of the best macro lenses out there. One part that blew my mind was the video capabilities. I'm walking very carelessly at a park, I'm not even holding the camera properly and yet the footage is still so smooth at 4K60. The color balance is there, saturation is good and the dynamic range is there. So there's this feature on the Galaxy S21 Ultra called Director's View. It allows you to use your front-facing camera as well as your rear cameras to shoot a video simultaneously. Before I forget, the Galaxy S21 Ultra also supports the S Pen. While it doesn't have its own S Pen slot as well as not supporting air gestures, it's still a nice addition and is only available on the Galaxy S21 Ultra in the Galaxy S21 series. It runs One UI 4 on top of Android 12 and One UI 4 is something that Samsung really has tuned to almost perfection. Samsung has really upped the ante in terms of software. Their One UI is one of the most stable and fluid. And for example, right now, for widgets that doesn't support Samsung's One UI, also get rounded corners. Samsung has also started dedicating all flagships from the Galaxy S21 series to have four major OS updates and up to five years of security updates. That is amazing. Features such as the privacy dashboard is also appreciable. Samsung devices are all protected by Samsung's security software and hardware called Samsung Knox and this is secure enough that Samsung is launching its own wallet that can hold uh, government IDs as well as boarding passes for airlines. The Samsung wallet should be released somewhere later this year and I'm very excited to use it because I am someone that will lose my physical IDs very easily. Other features such as quick share is something that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I basically send some of my files to other Galaxy devices and it happens in just a snap of a finger. This is equivalent to Apple's AirDrop feature that many people know. But QuickShare has other features such as share as a link. Sharing as a link will allow non-Samsung users to receive the files as they can use the link by scanning the QR code and download the file online. As a student, I do all my notes on Samsung Notes and it has become the backbone of most of my revision. Samsung Notes sync all my notes between all my Galaxy devices, including the Galaxy Books. Samsung Notes is the best note taking app in my opinion. I've tried taking notes on iPads with Notability, Good Notes, as well as Note Shelf, and Note Shelf is probably the best out of those in my opinion, but nothing compared to Samsung Notes. It has all the features, all the bells and whistles. You can convert any PDF, and Samsung Notes just has everything that a student would need. This is part of the reason why I cannot leave the Galaxy ecosystem, but I wouldn't want to anyway. Amazing software coupled with competent performance is all I would want on a phone. 
and this phone has it all. Day to day tasks will just fly by on this Galaxy S21 Ultra. When it comes to gaming, this phone handles it well. Light and moderate games will run smooth like butter on this device. And when it comes to heavier gaming, this phone can handle quite a lot. For example, the most in intensive games are like Genshin Impact as well as Flight Simulators. Flight Simulators can really queue off phones as well as PCs very easily. I've cleared off all my RAM before going to the heavier rounds of gaming and the most intensive one for me is the Flight Simulator. 20 to 30 minutes in, I realized the frame rate started dropping. I think it was from about uh, 40 to 50 FPS to about 30 FPS. Then maintain about 20 to 30 FPS throughout the whole hour, which is pretty good. I'll say this is quite a solid gaming device in 2022. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up as well as the subscribe button. It will help me out a lot and I'll be doing a giveaway soon. Let's talk about the battery life. I am a moderately heavy user and I get about 4 to 5 hours of screen on time on average in a day. And I end off days with about 30-40% left over. I've done a battery test on this before and the Galaxy S21 Ultra is one of the best battery performers that I've ever tested. The Galaxy S21 Ultra also supports 25 watts of super fast charging as well as 15 watts of fast wireless charging. Galaxy S21 Ultra also supports wireless power share, which allows this device to charge other devices wirelessly through the back of the phone. So if you have a Galaxy S21 Ultra, should you upgrade away from this device? My short answer is no. If you want to upgrade to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you're just getting some minor spec bumps and you're essentially getting a Galaxy Note. Well yes, if you have the spare cash, do upgrade to a Galaxy S22 Ultra, it has better specs, it's more updated, but for most people, I would recommend you to stay with the Galaxy S21 Ultra for at least another one or two years because this phone is still amazing. For those of you considering to get a Galaxy S21 Ultra in 2022, I can highly recommend it for $700 to $800 for the 256GB model. However, if having a 10x periscope zoom lens as well as a 6.8 inch huge display is not your priorities, the Galaxy S22 is a more compelling option as, as its cameras are optimized for Instagram as well as Snapchat and it will get extra year of updates as well as have a later specification. I have a shocking charge test of the Galaxy S22 versus the Galaxy S21 Ultra right up here. All in all, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is an amazing phone in 2022. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.